There he is. I knew I'd get one out of there. I knew I'd get one out of there. There's too many up there. Feels like a decent fish. Feels like a decent fish, guys. Oh, he's pulling. They're hot. Oh, he got off. Gosh dang it. Came back and got it. What? Came back and got it. Are you kidding me? That is not either that there's somebody with him. There's probably somebody with him. That fish pulled off and then another one loaded up on it. It's awesome. <laughs> when they're feeding, man, they're feeding. That was sweet. about them apples boys loaded up on a good one man it was a good one was pulling digging and it just came off let my bait fall boom <laughs> sucker grabbed it craziness man they're in there just getting on the bite you got to get it right above their head and get the right speed and the right depth to get them to trigger but if you do it right you get a bite it just takes a little practice and i'm definitely no pro at it i'm still working this live scope stuff out but nice fish that is fun awesome man much rather be catching them like this than dragging a worm or a jig or something um, i know that's a thing to do sometimes but if i can get bit like this i'm definitely gonna try it all right folks it's a lot of fun catching those schooling bass and it really gets hot and heavy through the summertime it continues on through the fall and it's not every day you got to get out there in a the lake and look around and see what's going on sunny days with a little bit of breeze are typically the best that plankton starts rising up to the top of the water column and the shad follow you just look around open water the mouths of coves are usually the best kind of halfway back in the creek channel um, usually it's in areas that there's a lot of water it'll just happen randomly with live scope i can kind of follow those fish around when they go down you know follow the shad and kind of um, estimate where I think they're going to come up next, but it's still just guesswork. It's very random, so you got to be ready when it happens, but it is a lot of fun. There's a lot of ways to catch these fish, and I'll just show you some of the baits that I like to use to catch them. First off, if I see some fish schooling up top, I'm going to start with the top water. If they're really going hot and heavy, something like this little whopper plopper is an excellent bait to get them going. Um, you can cast it a mile, and you just kind of burn it across the top of the water and those fish are up there they're looking up for wounded shad it's an excellent way to catch them another bait that works good is that super spook boyo this is a little bit smaller walking bait and right now you know a lot of the bait is really small the shad spawn was earlier this year so you got a lot of small bait out there something real small like this boyo does the work That's a better fish. These fish are better than what you think. Super, super healthy. Yo, folks, it's a lot of fun out here catching these schooling fish. Just got to mix it up. Top water, and then when they go down, throw an underspin, uh, scrounger, whatever. It's a really good walking bait. And you can go up to a Super Spook Junior or something, um, and a Pop Bar. Pop Bar is another, some kind of a popping bait. We'll get you some bites, especially after it kind of slows down. Now you can chug it and just kind of let it sit. But that's how I'm going to attack them on top. There he is. I almost knew they would grab it on the way up. That's a good plug of fish. The right kind out here. There. There we go. Just bringing that bait up. It's a little underspin. Man, there's 
five really nice fish sitting down there. Um, you know, they're all at least that big. I think some of them were bigger, but I just couldn't get them to bite. And I was bringing this up towards the boat, and the one slammed it. So changing changing uh, angles, I guess, and presentations a little bit. I don't know. Sometimes they think that bait's getting away, and they get all excited. But usually, if there's a little tight group of, like, three or four down there, you can get them to bite. And I dropped that shaky head in there like three or four times right in there and no bueno so interesting gotta mix it up another great bait when they're up on top and as they start to go down is an underspin just a quarter ounce or three eighths ounce this is a cumberland pro apex underspin i like to put a little super fluke or super fluke junior on there just a straight fluke sometimes a little swim bait three inch swim bait um, you got to kind of mix it up sometimes they want that straight tail sometimes they want that paddle tail I'm throwing this on 15 pound fluorocarbon. I got a seven foot medium heavy action Falcon Kara rod, seven to one gear ratio reel. Bite. Got him. Yeah, they're still in there. That's fun. No lie scope, man. That is handy. Not even watching them eat it. I'm just knowing where to cast. Let's see if I can pull you up in there. There we go. There we go. Yeah, it never gets old. A spot on that sucker. But you can throw that out when they're up on top and just burn it through them. And you'll get a lot of bites doing that when they start to go down, like that first. 10 or 15 seconds you can make this cast over there and just count it down to two or three or four and just slow roll it and a lot of times you'll pick up a few bites doing that same thing with the swim jig swim jig kind of you fish it kind of the same as the underspin not a lot of people throw this but this is an excellent way to catch those suspended bass and those schooling bass and i don't go with a shad colored bait when i'm doing this i go with a bluegill colored bait black and blue or some kind of green pumpkin um, this is just a rage tail menace or a little swim bait but bluegill color i think it stands out there's shad everywhere and something looks a bit a little bit different those fish are fired up and they're going to come towards that bait this is a seven foot medium heavy smoke rod seven one gear ratio real 15 pound fluorocarbon look at that you got a big school of fish big school of bait look at that that's awesome there's fish right in the middle of them right there busting them some fish oh, yeah see some fish there we go all right the other bait that I didn't mention for these schooling fish is just a little is a little three Point three, Kitek 3.5, something like that. Hogs custom baits. Uh, Strike King makes them. Just a little small swim bait. It's a pretty good little schooling fish um, on a quarter ounce head. This is a VMC. It's got a little screw lock on the shank, two aught hook. It's perfect for these smaller swim baits. But that is another really good way to catch these schooling bass that are just kind of roaming around. Let's see what happens.
<laughs> yeah, it's fun, man. Another way to catch those fish is a spoon. Still like a five inch flutter spoon. This thing weighs almost an ounce. I'm throwing it on 15 pound test. Seven foot, medium heavy action rod. You can go to a seven, two, seven, three, a little bit heavier action rod. This is a little bit light, but it does a good job. Ooh, there's some big fish in there. There's some big fish. Must be stripers. Some bigger fish in there. there That's a little one, but I saw some bigger ones. I saw some big ones in there. Those look like. Them. Three and a half, four pounders. I don't know if they're stripers though, it's hard to tell. Look at the bait down there. Holy moly. Just throw that spoon out there and let her fall and watch your line. Wait for it to jump. It's pretty fun. But that flutter spoon really gets a reaction bite when they don't take anything that's moving horizontal. You just throw it out there, reel it through those fish, just let it fall for, I don't know, count it down four or five seconds, and then just wind your reel about three or four times and it just flutters back up and just repeat and they'll knock the crap out of this thing you know this is one of those things when they won't hit the underspin or the swim jig throw the sucker out there and get bites um on cloudy days you're gonna throw something white on sunny days something with a lot more flash like this chrome but mix it up you never know there we go it came up i get one to grab the spoon there it is oh i missed it bumped it Dumped it again. Come on, here again. Got him. See, I knew there was a little bit better fish in there. There we go. Yeah. These are all just good slot fish. It's just good old fun time out here. I'm going to try it one more time. Just because. And we're going to move on. Another bait that works great when they get down a little bit deeper, if you can find them and you know they're in that area, and you just kind of fan cast this around and slow roll it. This is a Sujin, it's basically a scrounger head. This is a three quarter ounce, and I've got a Castaic Jerky J on there. I'm throwing this on like 17 pound test, and I've got a seven foot six rod. This is a little bit heavier bait, three quarter ounce. With the whole package, it's a good ounce. So a little bit longer rod, a little bit heavier rod. It's still got a lot of good tip on it. As you can see, maybe, I don't know. Anyway. 7 to 1 gear ratio reel, same deal. This is something you throw out, just let it sink and just slow roll it. It rocks back and forth. So it's like a kind of like a chatterbait. And it just kind of does this right here. And that thing just rolls. And man, I tell you what, sometimes that is the deal. Oh, well, they're still there. Bumped it. This thing is not getting it. Got him that time. Got him that time. Hit it like four times. A scrounger. He doesn't even know he's hooked. He doesn't even know he's hooked. That's funny how fat these fish are. Jesus. Try it again. But you gotta have a mix of baits on the deck and just keep mixing them up trying different things and see which see which ones the fish like there he is I'll throw a little shaky head 
This is the Perfect Trick Junior, I believe is what they call it. This is by Husky Outdoors. Pretty unique little bait. It's got this little bubble in the tail and that tail floats up. But I'm throwing this on a quarter or three sixteenths out. So I like a three sixteenths, like a slow fall. So that's if I'm maybe on the live scope and I'm seeing some individual fish swimming around or a group of fish, I can cast this out and just let it fall down through those fish. And it works great. It's um, you just got to try all these things. They want it. Sometimes they want a more vertical action. Sometimes they want the horizontal, or sometimes they want it kind of just up and down doing this. You got to mix it up. Keep your eyes peeled when you're fishing down the bank or you're fishing out on a point. If you hear something going on out there, just look, watch, see how often it's coming up. If it's coming up pretty regularly, it's something I would definitely go check out because it can turn into a really, really fun day. Dropped it right on his head. That was cool. Saw the fish on live scope and just cast it out there and dropped it right on his head. It never went, never went past him. Good fish. Yeah, I threw my worm off, but <clears throat> that was cool. I'm just watching that worm fall and it falls into the fish and I never see it come out the other side. <laughs> it's awesome. Really cool bite. Give me a thumbs up if you appreciate the content. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. What's your favorite bait for catching these schooling fish? There's so many, so many ways to catch them. I like them all. Good time out here just chasing these little schooling fish around. Doesn't happen for long. Got to take advantage of it. Until next time. <laughs> oh, that is so fun. It's stripers. Yeah, see, you get kind of stripers mixed in with these large ones. It's hard to tell what's what. There we go, that's a stripe. These things are kind of dangerous. They have really sharp gill blades. Little baby striper. Fun.